Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So I know it's been a while since I made some law school or life of a lawyer content. And you guys have been on my behind. Like you guys have been in my comments, like asking me questions, like what's up with this, what's up with that. And I've been feeling like I've been letting you guys down and I'm so sorry for that. But as you know, I am always here to give you guys some transparent outlook on what it's like going through law school and my journey to becoming a lawyer. So I have prepared for you guys a series and I wanna call 25 things you should know about law school that nobody probably told you and this series is good from everybody from the pre-law to the three L's or four L's if you will so if you are a zero L to a four L there is something in this series for you I guarantee you that I actually enjoy making these law school videos and talking about my law school journey on YouTube because when I started law school I was a deer in the headlights I did not know any lawyers I didn't have any lawyers in my family I am a first generation high school graduate so I navigated college all on my own um, and did the best that I could. I knew that I wanted to go get a graduate degree so I went to law school and navigated that the best that I could. And the things I'm going to talk about in this series you know as they say hindsight is always 2020 is kind of me looking back giving advice to my younger self just taking that advice and tweaking law school can be a stressful emotional mentally taxing three years so hopefully there is something in this series that can you know prepare you about what to expect and if you're already there um give you some calmness about what's going on and let you know that hey you're not alone and what you're going through and what you're feeling and what to expect as you um, make that transition from law school to actually the real world so i, so I hope you guys enjoyed this series of videos let me know in the comments what your thoughts are if you have any questions if you like this video and you want to see more give me a thumbs up and as you already do let me know in the comments what type of information you want what, what kind of questions you have and I'll do my best to find some time to schedule and record some more videos for you guys so like comment and subscribe to my channel and yeah let's get started so guys thing number one I'm gonna run out of fingers because I said 25 things and I clearly don't have 25 fingers but anyway thing number one read for class every night in law school yes law school is a lot of reading yes you will get assigned hundreds of pages to read every night but read for class every night that is your first commandment read for class every night like i need to say it that many times because that's how important it is this is a habit that you're going to want to form and you don't want to break i can't tell you how many people in law school start off really good students their 1l year but then 2l year 3l year they get you know caught up working or in their internship or maybe looking for a job and right Rightfully so, you're supposed to be doing all of those things, but your first job is to be a student. One, because you're still in school. Two, because you have to prepare yourself for the bar exam. Last, it should not be the first time that you read cases or see the information. You need to prepare for class, and that's why, you know, syllabus is your Bible, but you need to prepare for class and read your cases before you get to class. In addition to that, jot down any questions you may have, any, any points that you think that the professor might want to make. Do all of those things. Class is going to be a review. You want to spend the time in class paying attention and taking notes because this is where your professor might drop gems on what the final exam is going to be or, or real world practice or what to expect on a bar exam when it comes to this subject matter. And so you don't you don't want to be steady trying to keep up in class or you know, thinking about well, what are they referencing? What are they talking about? I don't remember that happening. You already want to be fully prepared, know what time it is and what to expect going forward. You also don't want to get embarrassed in class, right? Like cold calling still happens in law school. So the last thing you want to do is get called on and not have a clue about what's going on and be a deer in the headlights. Trust me, it happens. If you're in law school, you've probably seen it happen already. <laughs> Your girl can say it has never happened to me because guess what I did? I read for class every night and I also so here's a little million dollar tip for you. I also volunteered a lot. If you volunteer a lot, you won't get cold called on because the professor is going to get tired of hearing you talking and he's going to want to hear from the quiet people or the people who don't talk so much. So that was my strategy in law school. It wasn't that I was necessarily a know-it-all, but when I did know, I raised my hand so that people kind of got tired of me talking and that worked. And while you're in class, if you don't understand something, don't be afraid to raise your hand and ask a question. But also let me be clear about this. Law school classroom is not your stage. This is not where you get to go and ask all of your hypotheticals and this happened to my cousins and what if and um, I saw this on how to get, get away with murder and what Mm -mm. Like everybody is paying their money to be there and you need to be respectful of your classmate time and whether they have questions as well. So that's what office hours are for. So you want to be mindful about that when you're in class in law school. Tip number two, social media management. 
while we're on the topic of social media management, don't shy away from being a social media manager for a law firm. That's actually a good business because a lot of law firms are skeptical about handing over what they can post um, just to like a regular social media management person because the person don't know the law, they might give legal advice or whatever. So keep that one in your back pocket. That could actually be a career um, or a business that you can start coming out of law school. But anyway, that's not exactly the social media management that I'm talking about. I'm talking about making sure your social meets squeaky clean while you're in law school. Um, guys, I first like pay my seat deposit. Like literally the next day, I started getting firm requests from people who were, you know, that I didn't know. And I would click their profile and I'm like, do, I don't know you um, on Facebook and I would see that they went to attending John Marshall, Atlanta's John Marshall class of 2018. I'm like, how do they know me? Well, come to find out like the admissions office had already kind of, you know, without my knowledge and without my consent, started a Facebook group and added, you know, incoming class members to Facebook, like found them and added them. And so people started, you know, connecting. Now I understand why they do this. This could be a good thing when it talks to when you talk about housing and stuff like that. But I had no clue and I was not ready, y'all. And my Facebook was not ready. I was still posting raunchy memes and marijuana joke memes and all types of things that, you know, could look questionable, questionable to a potential employer or, you know, alumni that I might look to have an intern from or something like that. So social media, make sure it's squeaky clean, all of it, because they will come and find you. I don't know why people do that, but they will. I've seen that happen in law school where um, people have started petitions to get students thrown out of law school because they posted, you know, certain social group affiliations on Facebook or Twitter or things like that. People, if, as if law school ain't a 25 8 job, ha people have nothing better else to do. They do have something better else to do, but they still will find the time to be all up in your business. That's just what they're going to do. Um, and it's nothing that you can do about that. That's one of the things that I learned in law school. Like I invite everyone's opinions. I let people be who they are. I think that diversity in a room helps us all grow and it helps us all learn. And you don't have to agree with me and my politics or anything else that I got going on for me to respect you as a um, a colleague or a classmate or a human being. You have, you know, extreme racial party or extreme, let's just say you're a communist at heart. Like, you know, you believe that communist government is better. Okay, don't put that stuff on Facebook not going to work out good for you. Now, you also don't want to take the approach of not having social media. You can't just say, well, I'm going to refuse to play the game because that's going to kind of look suspicious when you're dealing with like potential employers and, you know, jobs and internships. I actually, my very last job before I went to law school, when my boss was like, you know, we got to interview your replacement. She was like, don't bring me any resumes that they don't have LinkedIn. So, you know, you don't want to discount yourself by looking like you have something to hide. Clean your profiles up, make them nice and shiny and make them public. You know, yes, it is time to get on LinkedIn and take LinkedIn very serious. Like your LinkedIn should be um, your pride and joy in law school and everything else should just follow that. Yeah, your LinkedIn needs to be up to date, squeaky, squeaky clean, looking good because that's where people are going to go to first. The moment you start sending in scholarship applications um, while you're in law school, internship applications, you want LinkedIn to start ranking from you. So transparency moment, guys. Like I have firsthand experience from this because I have some mug shots that might come up. Um, if you Google me real hard, and when I say by real hard, like go to the second, third, or fourth page. And so it actually worked in my benefit to have strong public profiles on every social media profile. That works in my benefit. So, you know, the moment Snapchat came up, I'm getting a Snapchat. Even though I have, I don't have anything on it, I want a Snapchat profile because it's going to start ranking on Google. So Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, it doesn't hurt. Even if you're not posting anything, it doesn't hurt to just have them there to kind of pull that weight of giving you like a clean, shiny, you know, something that you don't mind someone seeing instead of them, you know, stumbling across or finding something that you do mind them seeing. Also, be mindful of what you share, comment and like. Um, some of these things, if you gonna share a comment in agreement with them, you might as well have posted them and said them yourself. Like all, all the all the advice that I just gave you, throw that out the window. While you're in law school, just so that you don't hurt yourself when it comes to other opportunities. 
I would just wish people happy birthday and say congratulations if they got married or had a baby. That's it. Like, I wouldn't say nothing else. I wouldn't comment on nothing else. I wouldn't be, you know, talking about somebody here on Love and Hip Hop. I just wouldn't say none of it because you never know who that person on Love and Hip Hop, they might be your alumni's client. Like, that's a thing. I see that in Atlanta all the time. So you don't want to comment on people, celebrities, nothing. Just happy birthday, congratulations, Merry Christmas. That's like all you need to be posting. Thing number three, dating and relationships. I bet y'all didn't think I was going to go there, did you? But I did. I went there. If you are already in a relationship or married when you start law school, all I can say is prepare your partner for the ride. That wasn't me. I started law school as a single woman um, and matriculated, finished law school as a single woman. So I can't relate, but I have seen people go through divorces and extreme um, rift in their relationships because of how demanding law school can be. So if you guys know somebody that has gone through law school with a relationship with a partner, talk to them and see what advice they can give you or what tips they can what advice they can give you, what tips they may have, because it gets rough, but I'm not in a position to speak on that. Now, what I am in a position to speak on is casual dating while in law school. So dating can be fun and it could be like no strings attached, right? Because like for me, I was so focused on law school and I was in a new city. It was fun. Dating in Atlanta is super fun. So it was like going out and yeah, I might call you back. I might not. Who knows? My studies come first. And final times, like everybody gets kind of cut off. You know, that's just what it is. Sorry, this is my education. I'm paying for it. It comes first. So law school keeps you legitimately busy and can keep you kind of commitment free if you're into that type of thing um but it's important to play by a couple of dating rules while in law school so rule number one never ever 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 date a classmate i never did it but i saw people do it and it did not end well don't do it i don't know how to say this but one student might be a little bit more focused on school and the importance of law school and another student might be a lot, a lot more focused on the relationship and when another student when the other student prioritizes school over relationship they bump heads and stuff happens and all of a sudden you know it's awkward in class. It's like this major tension. You asking me, can I switch seats? No, because I've been sitting here all semester, so you got a problem with them. Oh, well, you know, two weeks ago, you want to be all up in his face. That's not my problem. So, so I've seen that happen. And trust me, you don't want no parts of it. What you also don't want no parts of is putting a bad taste in someone's mouth and them screwing you over when it comes to a job opportunity or internship because the legal community is small. And, um, you know, there have been classmates of mine that have applied for jobs at places where I interned and my old supervisor has reached out to me and said, hey, do you know so-and-so? Can you speak on the type of student he or she was? And, you know, I give an honest, objective answer. While that worked out for, you know, the two people that that actually happened to me because I had glowing things to say about them as classmates, had you been somebody who left a bad taste in my mouth, I probably would be like, eh. no, I'm just kidding. Or am I? But... You don't want to be in that position and you don't want to put yourself in that position. So it's just that's the kind of play the friendly game with everybody and steer clear. Now, I know that's easier said than done because in law school, you know, you see these people every day and you're going to become emotionally attached to them because you're dealing with them when your stress is at an all time high. You guys are going to see each other cry. You guys are going to go over each other's houses and, you know, meet each other's families. That's law school. Like when I tell people when I get with my classmates, I call them my cousins from law school. Like those are my cousins on my law school side. It is a different bond. And so you're you are going to get attached to these people. You're going to get attracted to these people. But if you could just hold on off until our results come out, I know that sound like forever, but trust me, that time will fly. Um, then after that is fair game, you know. But don't don't do that to yourself while you're in law school. Just just don't. Just like stay focused. Don't put yourself in that position. Um, that's just the best advice I can give on that. So guys, dating rule number two. If you haven't done so already, as a time, as of now, as a meaning as a time you watch this video, you no longer send pics to people. Over with, done. If I don't care who they are, who it is you're dating, how long you've been knowing them, where you know them from, you no longer send them pics. And do I need to say the obvious reason why? People will hold that over your head. The last thing you want is a leak. Yes, I have seen 
my classmates get some things leaked because because people were spiteful towards them about how their private relationships ended and they looked to end their career you don't want that so if you haven't done so done so already nobody gets pics of you male female nobody cut it out and then dating rule number three so if you do choose to date while you're in law school and you found a loophole around my whole don't date a classmate rule, and you decide that you're gonna go date a law student from the law school across the street or another lawyer in the neighborhood, thought you was slick, but I know some people do that. Play it smart. Be mindful about how you end things. Be clear about expectations. And again, this goes for male and female. Be, be mindful about who you're gonna be seen with, who they know, where they are. If you're gonna go out in public with that person, think about all of those things because you don't want um, rumors and you know problems when it's time for you to come out into the spotlight and you want your professionalism and your marriage to speak for themselves. That's just human nature. Like when people feel like they've been done wrong or they don't like the way that, you know their interaction went with you, they're gonna talk about you. I've heard men talk about women and I've heard women talk about men. It goes both ways. So, you know, um, just watch your interaction. So the moral of the story is don't get your honey or you get your money, I think. I just want to say that. So guys, that's all I have for part one of this series or video one of this series. I don't know how exactly how I'm gonna title it, but let me know in the comments, what do you think? Let me know if you have any questions or anything else that you wanna see while I'm filming this. I'm just gonna kind of film and post as I go along because I wanna try to incorporate as many of your questions and comments as I can um, as I go through this list. So guys, as always, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It would really encourage me and you know, let me know more of what you guys wanna see so I can make more videos and stay tuned for the next segment of this list of 25 things somebody should have told you about law school but didn't. See you guys next time. Bye.